When we talk about war in battles, a lot can be said about the weapons used. As modern technology advances, so do the infantry and artillery on the battlefield. Today, we'll be looking at the inner workings of a specific class of weaponry, how it came to be, how it kills, and above all, how it may work. So sit and prepare yourself, for we'll be talking about artillery today. Let's start with the basics. This class of military range weapons is most famous for launching munitions way beyond the normal range and power of regular weapons of infantry. Artillery has been used in the history of war as long as war has thrived and was initially used to refer to any engine that could discharge large projectiles at the enemy. Originally developed to breach defensive walls and fortifications during sieges, artillery has come a long way, all while staying tethered to its roots. And artillery doesn't just refer to the weapon projecting deadly ammunitions, but also soldiers in charge of them. Since there's such a broad definition of what artillery includes, there are various types of classifications that many systems and weapons can belong to. There are three types of artillery, organizational, equipment, and caliber types. But before we get into that, let's talk about the theory behind how artillery works. The word artillery developed in the Middle Ages, and for the longest time, it covered any and all military weapons. But now, historians refer to many mechanical systems used for throwing ammunition as artillery, like catapults or oningers. In medieval times, the trebuchet was developed, which used manpower to launch projectiles. It's been used in China since the 4th century. Moving further along in history, we see the development of gunpowder, a game changer. In the 14th century Ming Dynasty, vase-like cannons known as long-range, awe-inspiring cannons, were used to throw ammunition at enemies. Later, these cannons lost their vase-like shape as seen in the bronze Thousand Ball Thunder Cannon, which also acts as an early example of field artillery, but more on that later. Eventually, the Mongols managed to use Chinese artillery successfully in the Great Conquest. By the 1300s, they were using artillery such as set-bang cannons and swivel guns. Eventually, the weapons of artillery spread to the world, and by the Hundred Years' War, the artillery revolution in Europe had changed the way that battles were fought. Next, we have modern artillery. By 1430, artillery had become much more powerful and could now effectively tear down strongholds and fortresses. Cannons weren't elongated, and Joan of Arc encountered weapons with gunpowder. And gradually, forces started attacking with ships and other mechanical weapons by 1600. Artillery had come a long way. Fast forward a ton, and now we have modern artillery, which is used to provide fire and support to vanquish or suppress your enemies. There's a whole list of different types of fire support used by the modern military for different purposes. Usually, there's an artilleryman in charge of these rounds of fire. Modern artillerymen try to hit multiple rounds, as many as possible in fact, in the first round, and use methods like time on target so that all of their first wave of rounds land at around the same moment. This maximizes the amount of destruction caused. Now, let's look at how artillery works to kill an enemy. Modern artillery that we often see depicted in Hollywood looks fairly awesome. Watching the protagonist of a thriller walking through multiple explosions unscathed is obviously extremely unrealistic. But it's so fun to see on screen, even we know that reality is a bit more complex. But did you know it may actually be possible to survive an artillery strike even on flat, featureless grounds with minimal to no real injuries? At the same time, however, it's very likely that you may be killed even if there are multiple layers of protection between you and the blast when it goes off. That kind of contradiction is possible through a simple explanation, physics. Thankfully, the British did extensive research during the Second World War to figure out how it actually plays out on the battlefield. Next, we have the ways artillery claims its victims. Now, whether you die or not is a matter of luck, but here are three main ways. The first and most common way that you might fall victim to artillery strikes is through the fragmentation of the cell. This happens when the metal casing of the projectile is split into multiple smaller pieces. These pieces are thrown out at an extremely high speed in every direction possible. They can then plummet into parts of your body, and the piece's high velocity is what makes it fatal. Most artillery rounds are designed in a way that they create shrapnel during an explosion. And as we mentioned, this shrapnel can act as a kind of bullet, and it's all very intentional. The aim is to hopefully catch an enemy soldier along its path. As it hits the flesh, the shrapnel immediately shreds the tissue it passes through, causing nearly irreparable damage. Its lethality is dependent on the amount of energy it can impart into the flesh, much like a bullet. The energy used by the shrapnel causes cell death and damage far beyond what the rogue piece of metal actually touches. And because of physics, the shrapnel, when flying through the air after an attack, still carries momentum from before its fall. When an explosion explosion happens, a common way it's dispersed via the momentum of the round and the force of it is in a butterfly wings pattern. This is where little shrapnel pieces land behind the round and a little in front of it, while most of it lands on the left and right sides of the artillery round. But even then, it doesn't cause as much damage as you'd think. It only injured or killed about half the time. Next, we have the blast wave. So you're standing behind a thick steel plate and are protected from the shrapnel. Well, you're still not out of danger because of something called the blast wave. This is the other fairly common cause of death or 
injury via artillery. We're sure you've heard of a blast wave. It's when the pressure is suddenly increased around the projectile, which can cause irreparable damage to vital organs in your body. The explosion created by the artillery round causes that much damage solely because of the sudden expansion of the air around it as the explosive is consumed. The blast wave created by the explosion can keep going and cause damage to other things, like the steel protecting you or the concrete around you, or even your own body. And that's because if a blast wave is strong enough, it can actually crush your skull far more easily than steel. The most common part is damages in the soft tissue of your body. And if the blast is intense enough, it can even shatter buildings and vehicles in its wake, causing indirect and long-lasting damage. The blast wave is the most fatal if you're near it. We're talking feet or meter near. This is what's more likely to kill a tank or destroy a whole bunker, which is why either of those requires either a direct hit or multiple direct hits. Finally, the heat wave. Now, this is the least common cause of death and injury in a person via an artillery strike, but it's still possible. A heat wave caused by the projectile can sometimes increase temperatures to an extent where fires can erupt and the flesh starts burning. A rare way of dying, surely, but it's plausible. A heat wave is most effective when it very short ranges and if it's close to any flammable material. So, some examples would be thin-skinned vehicles filled with gas or the flesh of your enemies. Finally, let's discuss fuses and power. Now, you may be wondering, if all artillery causes harm in more or less these three ways, why are so many people controlling them obsessed with things like fuses and power? Well, all of that has to do with angles. As mentioned while talking about shrapnel, different kinds of targets are sensitive to artillery in different ways. So, changing out things like fuses and the gun's angle or the amount of powder bags used can really give an artilleryman control of how the round actually flies and where it will potentially explode. So, if an artilleryman is specifically looking to target vehicles, they may try to get the explosion to take place as close to the said vehicle as possible, and that requires an impact fuse, which will cause a detonation when the round reaches the target on the ground. And if they want to maximize lethal shrapnel dispersion, the best way to do that, as the British found, was to make the rounds go off about 30 feet above the surface. This was usually possible via timed rounds and a lot of math. Today, however, thanks to the US, we have proximity fuses, which detonate at a predetermined distance from the target. And that's all for this video. Did you know all this about artillery? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching the video, be sure to leave a like and share the video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications by pressing the bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. And we'll see you the next time. Thanks for watching.